Hi, it's Jason with DrPremed.com. I want to talk to you about the car section because a lot of students have a lot of trouble with this area and some quick tips and strategies you can do to excel in the car section of your MCAT score. The first thing I want to point out to you is that if you can do the sciences, then you definitely can do the car section. So you don't have to walk into it thinking it's some huge beast, some obstacle that you can't overcome, or it's totally different from the other parts of the MCAT. It's the same material, they're just asking questions differently. And then I also get students who tell me that they don't have enough time to read, they can't read fast enough, and the clock's always going against them on a car section. Well, if you can read on the other portions of the MCAT, that means you can still read the same way for the car section as well. And what I tell students is, when you read, you can't just read line by line going so slow trying to absorb every word that's in the paragraphs that you need to read for the car section. It's like if you go to a movie or you read a book for leisure, you go, you read the book at a normal pace, or you watch the movie, and at the end, if I would ask you, can you tell me what that movie was about, or can you tell me what you read in that book, you're able to do that. And so, you need to have that same mentality when you're going into reading for your car section of the MCAT. You need to realize that all you need to do is read normally, as you would a normal um, passage, and you'll have success in that area. You don't need to feel like, I got to memorize everything. I need to totally understand what's going on as I'm reading and commit it to memory because that's when you get stuck and you're not going to make any progress with the car section. But what you also need to do is, so strategies for the car section would be to, when you know there's a passage, what I want you to do is, I want you to focus on the questions first. So go take a look at the questions, see what's being asked of the questions, and then go and read. And the reason why you're going to do that is because if you look at the questions, it's going to keep you in on the things that you need to actually look for and understand when you're going through the passage because if you go into the passage blind you're just not going to have any clue what's going on as you read through the question stem and then you get down to the questions and you're just like okay I didn't even think I needed to focus on that or wow I spent a lot of time focusing on these other areas that aren't even helping me answer the question so you want to briefly give yourself some time to take a look at the cars questions see what's going on with those and then return to the passage itself and dig deep there to get a better understanding of what's going on and what I tell students is you don't want to spend a time a lot of time going back and forth reading and then going to the questions and then going back to the passage and rereading things. You really want to just do a good overview when you first read the passage and then be able to dig into the questions and you want to spend more time actually on the questions than actually reading and rereading the passage and that's a reason why a lot of students struggle with finishing the car section on time because they're spending so much time rereading the passage they look at the question then they go back to the cars and what you really need to do to excel in the cars is really get to know the author figure out their biases, figure out what they would say, what are they thinking, and just have an overall picture of who is this author, why are they writing this piece, what are they trying to convey, and who is this piece written for. And then when you kind of have that framework in your mind and in your head of who the author is, then it's going to really help you when you go in and answer questions. And you also want to have a good idea of what the main idea, the key subject is, and any biases that you might see in the car's passage because that's going to help you out or if you see any disconnects where the author says one thing here or something's rebuttal, rebuttaled in another area of the passage keep those in mind because they make for great questions and again with the cars it's not about having the information right there in front of you where you just pick out something from the past that's going to answer the question. It's really about interpretation and understanding what's going on. And so that's why you can't just read and keep reading because that's not going to get you anywhere. You really need to sit and really take in that information Figure out who the author is, what points they're trying to make, as I've been telling you back and forth. It's all about the author. Understand who that author is and know their biases and why they're writing this piece and what they want 
to convey to the reader. If you're able to do that and just take your time, work methodically through the questions, you're going to be able to pass all your car's passages. It takes time, it takes work to get through it, and a strategy I talked about before is using LSAT materials to help you improve on the car section. You can find more about that later. And again, this is Jay's from drpremed.com with some quick tips for the car section of the MCAT.